What's up Godzilla fans, Samson West here and I'm bringing you my next Godzilla figure review. It's been a while and I thank you all very much for being patient with me. I've had some hectic stuff going around in the home so I haven't had my mind totally towards my toy reviews but now I'm back for now. So yeah, as you can see here we have the X Plus 30 centimeter Hedora. And this guy is an impressive figure but to take it from somebody else, let's see what Dr. Malcolm has to say about this thing. That is one big pile of shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way, and I'm, I'm sure he doesn't mean that in a bad way either. But as you can see, this is a giant pollution monster, so in a sense, he is... One big pile of shit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. So yeah. This is my X Plus Hedorah. He is a very rare, very expensive figure, mainly because he's a 30 centimeter figure. And more than that, he is the biggest figure that I have out of my entire collection. My old biggest figure being the Bandai Great Monster Series Fragile Wing Ghidorah. Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Be quiet. So, yeah, this guy comes in at about 14 inches tall. He is a very impressive, very large figure. And I've had a lot of people comment on that when they saw my official uh, entire collection video. This guy is a big figure. Alright, so let's get on to his history. I, again, have told you that I don't like to talk too much about history because it takes up too much time and it's quite frankly the most boring part of a review. But I'll get to the basic nitty-gritty things. Like... This is the final form of Hedora, so I'm kind of more or less going to talk about just the end of the movie that he was in, which was 1971's Godzilla vs. Hedora. He's an unknown monster by origin, because he just kind of came out of nowhere. We are just supposed to expect that all the pollution and toxic waste morphed together in this primordial ooze and made this monster. And he is a mutant because he can... Uh, just absolutely morph into anything he wants. He can morph from a giant tadpole into a giant frog type thing. He turns into his flying stage, which he can alter between the flying stage and this stage, which is kind of cool. So, yeah. Godzilla and Hedorah here had a battle to the death on Mount Fuji, one of the longest battles in the original Showa series. And... He's one of Godzilla's most formidable foes. You know that because he had to have the army help to kill this thing. Godzilla couldn't kill him alone. They used these giant solar panel type things that shoot out electricity in between them to dry out the Hedorah and thus killing him because he thrives on slush and ooze and pollution. But when he's dried out, he's just rendered useless and he died. So, yeah. And it also had one of the uh, corniest moves out of all time, Godzilla being able to fly using his atomic breath, which is hysterical. So, yeah, that was the one movie he was in. He was in Final Wars, but that's a different suit, different, you know, just different time period, and this is the Hedorah that we're talking about. Okay, on to detail. This thing is as detailed as can be, because like most X Plus stuff, they go all out to make their things look great, and this thing is no exception. Just the color of it, the way his body oozes from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, just like he's supposed to because he's a giant like sludge monster. And just the colors on him are brilliant too. And the most important thing to me are the eyes. The eyes on this guy are dead on. As you can see, you have the orange of the eye color, and then it comes into the pupil, which is solid black with the like sun ray yellow spiking out in all directions and my camera isn't of great quality so I can't zoom in and show you this but there are little vessels in the eyeball too which is very impressive I will zoom in as much as possible to show off something that I like very much that they did with the eyes now I'll pan up and I'll move his head over a little bit and hopefully you'll be able to see what I am talking about as you can see, maybe, it's hard to tell because of the glare, but at the very top of the eye, there is a little white dot that is separated from the rest of the Hedorah's eye. Now, what that is, that is the point on the Hedorah where he shoots the laser beam out of his eye, which is impressive. It's not on the other eye. I can turn him, and hopefully the camera won't glare, but as you can see, there's no white dot on the other eye. 
They went as far to show that this thing is as accurate to the movie as possible. Little white dot, impressive as hell to me. I love that they did that. Wouldn't expect them to do something like that. And as you can see, on the top of the head, it has the crack that goes along the entire top of the head. That's where the, like, purring, red glowing thing would come out. And then he would do his attack, where he shoots the laser beam out of his eye. And you can see all the brilliant colors, the yellow, which is awesome. And putting this guy back up, and I'll zoom back out so that you can see all the colors. You see the red on the head right there, which is pretty damn cool. The colors are very spot on on this figure. I love it very much. Turning into his profile view, you can see he's in a slightly hunched over state, but that's, that's something that you can't ignore, being that this is a huge figure. He's a huge monster, so he's in a hunched over state because he probably couldn't hold himself up too well. He has terrible posture, just awful posture. Okay, going to the back, you can see one of my favorite parts out of the figure, the giant hunchback bubbly thing with all the yellow and reds that are spiraling around the center of the back, just spanning out from the center, and that's pretty awesome. I love that they have done this. Just the red and the yellow look great because they're kind of a dark color, not so, so much that it's like vibrant to make this thing look like he's not much of a sludge nasty pollution monster. If it was too vibrant, he would be like a, oh, happy day monster, but that's not it. And something else pretty great, under the tail, you see the yellow that goes underneath the tail. Same with underneath the arms, you have the yellow that lines the underbelly of each of the arms, and that's great. This thing is perfect with detail. Can't ask for more. Spot on, awesome. Okay. With articulation on this thing, I can go ahead and tell you that there is none because this is just a statue figure. He doesn't need to really move, but there are glue seals where the arms connect. Those are separate pieces where each of the arms connect there and there, and the head is a separate piece, but I'm not going to fool around with that too much because I don't want to break it. That would be one of the dumbest mistakes out of my entire life if I did that. The feet, I don't think are, they move a little bit. They're not meant to articulate, but they do wiggle a little bit back and forth. As for the tail, it is the same way. It moves a little bit, but that's because the tail came as a separate piece. So you're supposed to hair dry it and then slide it into place. But that's it. Nothing else moves on this guy. So yeah, sorry for anybody that wants to make stop motion out of ridiculously big uh, X plus figures. All right, now on to sizing. That is the last portion of this review, so let's go ahead and do this. If you saw my very first figure review that I ever did, not my G-Fest update, but my figure review, you saw this already, but I'm going to show it to you again. Here we go. We have the X-Plus Godzilla 1971. <laughs> And this sizes up pretty damn perfectly. You saw the original thing I brought in, my original review of this guy. You saw that I brought in Hedora to size up with this. And this is perfect. They both size up great with each other. Like Hedora is just huge enough that he can look down on this Godzilla. And just the way they both look together is perfect. I couldn't ask for more. And that's why I had to have both of these figures. Very expensive, but very much worth it. And what, oh, the best part that I kind of forgot to do with the detail, what we have here, Godzilla has his little eye patch, and if you remember in the movie, Godzilla came over and swung over and punched the door in the eye, and then that made his eye crust over with this piece, if I can get it to stay in place. Kind of hard to get these things to stay in place, they're not perfect. Come on, please. Okay, there we go for right now. <laughs> Okay, we're back. All right, it, it took me a while to get it to stay into place. So that's why I had to cut the video right there. But yeah, as you can see, Godzilla punched him in the eye, and he has the crusted over eye, which is a separate piece that's supposed to kind of stay on. I'm going to have to figure out a way without gluing it on, because I don't want to ruin the valuability of this thing, or the value of this toy. So yeah, that goes on, and that's why I had to have the internet exclusive. It came with that, and it also came with the tiny flying Hedorah which 
pretty impressive. It's pretty neat. Just kind of a cool thing to have. But yeah, as you can see, these guys size up great. Extra eyepiece. They both have a messed up eye, and that's cool. Bringing the Godzilla out. All right, I'm just going to take this back off because I don't want it to fall out in the middle of my sizing portion. All right, for my next guy I'm going to bring out, this is just hilarious. A lot of you have this figure, and so that's why I'm bringing it out to size up with this. We have the Bandai 1968 Godzilla. Oh, isn't that pitiful looking? This doesn't size up at all. I love this. If Godzilla was actually this size compared to the Hedorah, that would have been the end of the series. He would, Hedorah would have just looked at him wrong and Godzilla would have killed over. So, as you can see, this does not size up at all. Hedorah could absolutely dominate Godzilla if this was the actual size of these two. So yeah, that was just a little thing I wanted to show you. Doesn't size up well at all. And like I said, he was in Final Wars, so I will bring out the biggest Final Wars Godzilla I have. This is the Bandai Creation 12-inch Godzilla from Final Wars. And you know, I'm actually not sure whether this sizes up right or not, because in Godzilla Final Wars, he never actually got close to Hedorah so we could see how they were next to each other. I would say that this might work, but because of a feeling I have by watching the movie, I think the Hedorah was sized up to be, like, on par with Godzilla. He was about the same size, at least the Final Wars one was. So, but I mean, this could work, I, I guess. I'm not exactly sure. I'm sorry. Because they never got close enough to each other for us to know if they were sized up like this or not. So yeah, moving him out and getting him back in the center to end my review. Okay guys, so I don't really know what more to say. This is the end of my review. You've seen everything I have to say and seen everything I have to offer. I would give this guy a definite 10 out of 10. He is one of the best figures out of my entire collection. One of the most expensive ones too. Yeah. So, okay. 10 out of 10. Couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah. That's the end of my review. Sayonara.